so um, we've just take, stripped out all the back of the, uh, the third vehicle now, um, and we found a bit of rust. Um, so what we're going to do now is take, start taking the panel work out to see how bad it is, repair all that work, and start putting it back together. So as you can see from the back of the, um, the actual floor pan on the back, plenty of rust up round by the wheel arches. Obviously this whole pan's going to have to come out now. Um, repair the, the, the wheel arch here, along there. Um, repair this outer section to the boot floor. And then we have a repair panel for the whole of the, the, the middle bit of the boot floor. So we'll do that um, and we'll start ripping it out. But before we go any further, we've got to take the fuel tank out from underneath. Um, but, and then I, prior to that, obviously rear the tow bar off, um, drop the fuel tank out. And once the tank's out, we can start then taking the boot panel work out and then start um, reproducing new panel work um, and start welding it back in. Taking up the uh, carpets in the front to have a look at the driver's footwell so far. Uh, what we found is it is a little bit wet in there, more than a little bit wet actually. The under seal or the under carpet um, underneath the main carpet it basically started turning to mulch in my hands. It was that sort of damp and a little bit mildewy and all that. I'll try and pull that back so you can see better. Um, what we found is that the Land Rover's actually had a previous repair. Um, you can see, I don't know how well it comes across because they've actually used the colour coded paint, um, but they've replaced this whole section here. Okay, so, what we're doing here is uh, we're going to compression test the, uh, the, the, the engine uh, purely for um, just diagnostics uh, reasons. So recently this engine's had a new head gasket on it. Um, we're unsure whether we want to pull the engine and gearbox out of it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the gold glow plugs and compression test uh, each individual cylinder, see how it comes back. Now that's going to tell us a lot of things. That's going to tell us whether uh, the head gasket is um, still 100%, whether there's any additional wear within the bottom end of the engine, i.e. pistons, liners, etc. And whether we can salvage and work with this engine without doing too much more to it. Fortunately, uh, it's not looking too good as the three glow plugs that I have pulled uh, are actually filled with, uh, with engine oil. Um, there's only a few ways engine oil gets into the uh, combustion chamber of the engine. So it's not looking good so far, but as we, uh, as we progress on to uh, doing the compression test, we'll, uh, we'll find out more. To uh, get the final glow plug out um, is remove the aircon compressor and the uh, um, aircon belt. Um, just so we can uh, we can have access to to that area, and uh, with the help of uh, one of Max's little uh, little gems, little spanner, uh, we've managed to wind that out now. And uh, there's the culprit. Uh, luckily, the fourth glow plug that we've pulled um, <coughs> is bone dry. So if we compare that to ones that we've pulled out of the other three cylinders, they're all all wet unfortunately. So what does that suggest is then? Um, we're gonna, once we've compression checked it, um, you know, we'll then decide from there on uh, what the next step is, which potentially we could be taking the head off, dismantling the engine uh, further to uh, to see where the, uh, where the oil's coming through. Uh, we're still not 100% sure where it is. Um, but uh, like I said, after the compression test, it'll you know, we'll get the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll decide the next steps from there. We're now uh, next stage, stage ahead, uh, so we've got a um, compression tester um, in through the glow plug hole, uh, which is just here, um, currently on one of the cylinders. Uh, so what we're now going to do is uh, we're going to uh, turn over the engine uh, and basically this gauge here 
is going to read uh, should go up to around just shy of uh, 400 uh, psi hopefully uh, with a cold engine and then what we'll do is we'll do each in cylinder individually and then work out the, the difference in compression between each cylinder. If it's more than 10% difference between each cylinder, we know we've definitely got a problem and we're gonna to have to uh, take the next step, which will be stripping the, uh, stripping down the engine, unfortunately. Um, but we're not gonna know that until we've, we've fully done the, uh, the, the, the checks uh, going forward. Right, we're at the uh, next stage of doing the uh, the engine. Basically, the compression test uh, come back bad. Uh, we've got three cylinders that are on high compression uh, compared to the uh, front cylinder. Um, they allow sort of about a 10% difference between the, the four cylinders. If it's anything higher than that, then we know there's an internal problem. So unfortunately, with the front cylinder running at about 400 psi and the others running at 430, 440, that's over 10%. So we know we've potentially got a uh, an internal problem with the engine, which is a shame because uh, we're kind of hoping that we we, uh, we wouldn't have to take it out. So uh, we're just in the middle of uh, taking out the the, the, the engine. We're going to uh, leave the gearbox lump in. Um, so as you can see, we've started dismantling all around the side of the engine. Uh, so all the intercooler pipes have come off, the EGR pipes, um, all of the inlet pipes, right around to the uh, the radiator, all the cooling system. Um, and I'm just in the middle of uh, unwiring uh, all the various plugs uh, for, for various sensors around it. And uh, hopefully uh, within the next sort of couple of hours, we'll, uh, we'll have the engine out. Tom's reluctance to talk on camera stems, I think, from um, a personal privacy. You think it's from uh, his childhood? I th no, I don't think it's from his childhood. I think he's just a very private guy. He's very capable, very technically capable. I think he just uh, doesn't like being in the public eye. Do you think it's because he's around a lot of sappers and uh, he, he might feel inferior being RAF? I think inferior is the wrong word with the RAF. Because uh, we have to remember, they did come from the Royal Engineers. They did, they did. Yeah. Uh, the Royal Flying Corps and whatnot. Uh, so Winston Churchill and Sir Neville Chamberlain saw it in their light to cut loose the dead weight, so to speak, from the Royal yeah, Engineers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, 1918 they formed the RAF and they kind of just went askew from there. Are we sure it wasn't 2017 uh, because they're having a centenary because they're having a centenary this year? So is that here, right? I ah. thought it was 1918. I thought it was the end See, of the war. that's what I you thought too. New, no, you that's know? what I thought too. Yeah. I think they're trying to try to big themselves up a bit. I think they're just keen to get on with the party. That's is what that what it is? It is. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> sappers, we actually can agree with that one. We, like, we, we, we think, we think, oh, hats off to the RAF. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, we can't agree on when our call was founded, so we just party all the time. We're at the end of day one. Uh, just to update you on what's happened, we've had. Uh, diagnostics happened to the engine and unfortunately we found that uh, three of the pistons have got a severe oil leak so the engine's going to have to come out for reconditioning. We have taken out the boot floor because it's quite rusty. Uh, for, unfortunately the, the rust spread to the wheel arches uh, a couple of other places and we found a minor uh, rust patch in the chassis which is going to have to be patched. We've taken out most of the interior but because it's on the lifts we couldn't finish the passenger side of the interior. We found that the, um, the front footwells, uh, the patches, were already actually done by the previous owner, so that saved us quite a lot of work, and that the wing tops are um, uh, perfect, really. There's, for the age of the vehicle, there's no rust. So what we've opted to do is not to split the body on this uh, particular discovery. So the idea is we'll weld the new boot floor in in the coming days, we'll put the interior back in when uh, we dried out the carpets and things like that, and we'll fix the sunroof, uh, and we're going to take out the engine for reconditioning. Right, we're now at the next stage where we're going to uh, we're just getting ready to take the engine out. As you can see, the uh, the bonnet is now off. Um, most of the ancillaries uh, are off around the uh, around the engine. And uh, the next stage is to uh, get the trusty engine crane, move it in, and uh, undo the gearbox bolts and uh, pull the engine out. Pretty good. Inside the box is dry as well, so 
you know there's no, no leaking. Right, we're now at the final stage, we've actually got the engine out. Um, took a lot longer than we, uh, we initially thought. Uh, purely just down to people using the wrong nuts um, on all of the, uh, the, the, the gearbox dowels here. Um, they'd used a, uh, a form of lock nut uh, rather than just a uh, standard serrated nut. And uh, yeah, so uh, what uh, should have been a, uh, a few hour job uh, turned into uh, half a day's work uh, just to pull one out. So, but it's out. Uh, I think we're pretty positive that the uh, the head gasket has gone at some point, um, especially over the oil waste. You can just see the amount of oil um, collected around the actual head gasket here. Uh, so I think that's the, definitely the culprit. Um, maybe it's from a, a previous uh, um, the previous owner, uh, the garage, where they haven't maybe skimmed the head. Uh, and uh, done the uh, you know done the full job, uh, but we will find out the uh, the uh, what what position we're in once we uh, once we actually pull it apart. So uh, this is our passenger carrying discovery. Uh, what we've done so far is we've pulled the engine completely out of it, which turned out to be quite a, a task in of itself because it's got some strange um, engine mounts that connect to the, both the gearbox and to the engine, which we're not sure what they're, they're actually off of. They're, they're not a type that any of us has ever seen before. We don't know if it's an aftermarket or if it's something somebody's modified off of a different model of engine, like a V8 or something. Don't quote me on that, but that's what we think it could be from. Um, it, it causes a lot of headaches because there's a lot of hidden bolts when we come to take the engine off. And again, if you can see on the camera, how tight the gearbox is to the um, uh, the wall of the, the vehicle. There's literally nothing you can see along the top. We ended up having to pop off the cover, which is riveted down inside. So we ended up having to put an extension on that was about that long sort of thing, uh, so that we could reach from where the gear stick is to where the, the um, bell housing meets the engine, just to be able to undo the, uh, the nuts, which also didn't help because somebody had used um, some uh, Nordlock nuts, which are designed to, to go on as a safety critical nut, and they're not really designed to be undone easily, so that caused us a lot of, um, a lot of time and aggravation. So yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at with the, uh, the engine, really. Um, the inside of the vehicle, um, we've managed to take all of the interior out now that we wanted to, um, to take out, ready for jet washing in the morning. So everything's pretty much as it was um, this morning because we cut the floor out and, and done all the, the bits and pieces we needed ready for, for jet washing. So like I say, we ended up being held behind because of the engine. So that's pretty much where we're at with this. Please like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and on Twitter at VIHR.